Alright, so I'm just on my way to work and I wanted to get down some more about the thinking we were doing earlier this week in class, in week two, about what is the difference between a senior English student and a junior English student. And we were kind of talking a bit about how, look, yeah, they might be a little bit different because, let's face it, they're adolescents and they're growing and they change a lot really quick. Um, but are they really that different after all? Does a year 10 student who goes off for summer break um, at the end of that grade and come back like six weeks later um, really change that much in that time and transform into a totally different human being that does senior English for year 11. And we talked a bit about how there used to be exit credentials and stuff at year 10. You know, there used to be a way to leave. And so we've got this historical hangover of the division between junior and senior school that persists. But there's no exit credential anymore. And now here in Australia, we ask our students to stay until they're 17 years old. And yeah, there are pieces of legislation that happen around um, children turning 16, but there's also stuff around turning 18, like they can't drink, they can't vote. This idea of adulthood, uh, it's a legislative grey area between 16 and 18, so there's that. But really, a lot of the stress that comes from the idea of teaching senior English, um, it's not to do with the student, and it's not even to do with the curriculum, it's to do with the assessment, right? The fact that that assessment is so different and so high stakes. And you are going to stress out about that, believe you me. I mean, you're going to sit there as a new teacher when you get your first year 11s and you're going to look at them with their new books and their new senior uniforms all excited and you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, um, I can't fail them. How are they special? What do I do with them? Um, you're going to be just as nervous as them. I guess that's one of the points that I want to make. Um, I was thinking about it this morning. When we were in the workshop, I said something about, you know, those year 10s, they come back and it's year 11 and they're not ready for senior school. Um, I was chastising myself this morning because really, school is for the students and they are year 11 and they've turned up and it's year 11. So actually, they are perfectly ready for year 11. You know who's sometimes not ready for year 11s? The teachers, it's the teachers who aren't ready for year 11. Like we've all imagined teaching senior, right? And for a lot of teachers, when they get into high school teaching, it's that year 12 experience that sometimes they've got in mind that they enjoyed so much themselves. And we're, you know, looking forward to teaching that senior student who's already up here. But our year 11s are just at the start of that journey. And I just got to work and locked myself out of my room. So let's go get some keys. Um, what does all this thinking mean for um, our thinking about the syllabus? So for one thing, it explains why year 11 doesn't count towards your year 12 exit credential. Yeah. Right? Um, it seems hardly fair that they would turn up, our students would turn up at year 11 and their very first assessment task is going to make a difference to whether or not they get into uni or, you know, other kind of, well, I mean, there's a question, isn't it? What do we do for our senior students besides help people get into uni? Uh, question for another video, perhaps. But it also impacts the way we treat students in junior school, right? Because if year 11 starts to be a little bit more oh, yeah. important, oh, yeah. um, then we find ourselves starting to do things like um, map the year 11 experience back onto year 10 so that they can use year 10 to get ready for year 11, which they were supposed to be using to get ready for year 12. Got the keys. Um, so that's some of my thoughts wrapping up from this week in terms of that question of what is the difference between junior and senior English, besides the fact, of course, that junior English is based on an Australian curriculum and senior English is based on a Queensland syllabus. Um, as if things weren't confusing enough. So I encourage you to think about that, not just how we map Year 11 to prepare students to Year 12, but how Year 11 should be thought of as mapping backwards the other way, um, not just as a way of pulling the Year 12 experience down into the junior grades. I don't mean that. I mean, as a senior teacher, part of your job is to look backwards and see what has already been mapped, what territory has already been covered, um, where that student is already at and the kinds of things they've already been doing and you're supposed to build on that, not just build towards Year 12. Uh, so give that some thought 
and also just give some thought to what you already know. Uh, what do you already know about what English teaching involves? Well, it involves, you know, engaging students in speaking and listening and reading and writing and viewing and creating. And it involves looking at different mediums of productions, different kinds of text, different genres. We base our model of English on the idea that texts exist in a context. So we do look at, uh, you know, the social and historical uh, context of those texts, that stuff, the guts of English, doesn't change in senior school. It's still what we're on about. So as long as you know that, uh, then hey, you're already ready to teach senior English. Uh, so see what you can observe about what other teachers are doing while you're on prac. Or if you know a student who's in senior school, ask them about their experiences, uh, pick their brain while you know them. Uh, because once you are an official teacher, your students in school uh, might not open up to you the same way. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, talk to you again soon.